Always knocking on the door, Jurgen Klopp's unrelenting Liverpool could climb above Manchester City on Saturday, but Newcastle's renaissance won't make it easy. Hobbling along in the bottom three, the mood's entirely different for relegation-threatened Everton. A story of the Blues at Goodison Park as Chelsea arrive, led by Frank Lampard's successor. It's an equally tight fight for the top four. We focus on Arsenal and Tottenham, both in the frame to qualify for the Champions League and pumped up for games against West Ham and Leicester, respectively. Finely tuned and fighting for four trophies. The wins keep coming for Liverpool and everyone is playing their part. Oh, Luis Diaz kicks out brilliantly! It's the first for Liverpool for Luis Diaz! Alexander Arnold. Sadio Mane! Robertson can raid for Liverpool. Firmino with finesse! What a delicious little touch! Good ball in, shot him with the header. Beautiful Liverpool goal. Mane, oh, that's glorious. Salah, that's beautiful. Oh, that is gorgeous. Henderson can fling it back in. And Origi in front of the cross again. Extraordinary. Players at their absolute zenith. Wow, what next? Well, this week, confirmation that the mastermind behind the success is sticking around until at least 2026. Yeah! With all the boys to give everything they can for, the, for us to win the, the Premier League, because it's, it's big for us, big for the club, for the, for, for the fans. For sure, we always play Man City lose or make draw, and we will win all the game, because Winning the Premier League is not happening every single year, so if you have chance, especially one point behind, I think uh, sometimes it's even harder you lose you say, this kind of uh, trophy with one point behind than ten points behind. We're making sure that we will the mistake won't, won't happen to us, but Man City. <laughs> to stand taller than the rest, Liverpool know a win in Newcastle is a prerequisite. But there's a feel-good factor rippling around this fine city too. They're savouring a dramatic resurgence. St James's Park is such a happy place at the moment. Six Premier League wins on the spin here for Newcastle. There's no getting around from it. They're a very good side. They're going to be very tough to, to even get close to. Um, they're, they're not on for the quadruple for no reason. Um, they're a very good side. But we're in very good form. Um, we're in very good form at home, which is what we want to make this place a fortress. Um, we want to get back to those days of how great it was. Um, so yeah, that, that's the goal that we have. Newcastle led, but lost at Anfield just over four months ago. Yet so much has changed since then. That night, only goal difference kept them off the bottom of the Premier League table. After the latest win at Norwich, they've elevated themselves to ninth. They're an incredible team, they have a way of winning games even when they're not at their best, which is probably the hallmark of a great team. And when they're at their best, they're, they're almost unstoppable. So we don't quite know what Liverpool will face, but we have to concentrate on us. And yeah, we have to be perfect defensively. And we have to give them a threat the other way. We have to give them things to think about from an attacking sense. I think we have the players to do that. It's just whether we can get our players at their, their very best levels. It will be tough, but we have to make sure that we are ready for that. Um, we have our targets as well. We have to. We, we know we need results, and um, we try to perform as good as it's more likely than not to get one. The eyes of the world are watching this title race. Every step analysed, every selection carefully pondered. Yet Liverpool, with composure and class, are merely focused on ticking off their latest assignments. Manchester City remain the club to catch after Gabriel Jesus wreaked havoc by netting four goals against Watford last week. 
that slender one-point lead in the title race intact before Pep Guardiola's men also established a narrow advantage in their bid to win the Champions League, beating Real Madrid 4-3 in their semi-final first leg. John Stones was forced off, joining the already injured Kyle Walker in the treatment room and reducing City's defensive options away at Leeds. It's tougher because Leeds is tough. And I think every, everyone, everybody in the club knows what we are playing for in this last part of the season and then do what you have to do. So we, we make an incredible last three games with a lot of goals we score, we incredible a lot of chances we create and this is the, what you have to continue to do. Leeds are unbeaten in five but with a tough run of fixtures and Burnley rallying their resilience seems sure to be tested as they strive to secure safety. They conceded seven without reply at the Etihad, their worst result under Marcelo Bielsa. But Jesse Marsh reversed the direction of travel. Facing City, Arsenal and Chelsea in consecutive matches will be a test of that newfound belief. They're preparing for great change at Manchester United and it's very welcome too. The plan was always for Ralph Rangnick to take on a consultancy role at the club from the summer and he'll combine that with being the head coach of the Austrian national team. The point his current side earned against Chelsea on Thursday was largely down to David De Gea and Cristiano Ronaldo. It feels like the latter is single-handedly sparing further United blushes at present. Ronaldo has scored eight of their last nine Premier League goals. But top four hopes have disintegrated ahead of their final home match against Brentford. It's been a difficult season for us. We haven't performed at the level that we want to. And, uh, yeah, we... Hopefully we can uh, we can win the, the games that, are, that we have next now and then uh, come back stronger next season. What chance of another big Brentford win to cap a fine first season in the Premier League? They've collected five victories from their past seven to shift the mood from fearful to fun for the final few matches. History beckons for Watford, but it's a distinction they'd rather avoid. Off the back of their heavy defeat at Manchester City, the Hornets return to Vicarage Road, where they've lost their last 10 league games. No top flight team has ever lost 11 in a row at home. No wonder Roy Hodgson is wringing his hands. But while relegation appears unavoidable for Watford, Burnley's revival continues. The Clarets are out of the bottom three. It's never over uh, until the end of the season. That's why uh, we we try to, to to fight every game because uh, we know our quality. We have many great players on the on the squad. We know we can we can win every game if we if we play together. Caretaker manager Mike Jackson seen his side collect seven points from the last nine available to overtake Everton. It's the first time since August Burnley have gone into the weekend above the relegation places. Progress they definitely won't want to waste at Watford. Everton, where do we start? Could still be more. Dennis and still Watford have five. Everton cut apart. Here's Eda. 2 0 Norwich. Two in double quick time. Everton battered. It just racks up the pressure on Rafa Benitez. Another mistake this done by Godfrey. Vitra pulls it back to corner. And are punished! Frank Lampard's side are in deep, deep trouble. Everton confounded and unthinkably the wrong side of the relegation line. As a former Everton player, massively worried. I see the form of Burnley and they've had some good results under a new manager. And it's leaving Everton in the bottom three and they've got to try and claw and reel teams in, whether that's Burnley again or Leeds United. There's lots of Evertonians at the moment that are panicking. The 
official is gone, Everton stay up. Everton are still afloat in the Premier League. The draw is good enough. I see it similar in terms of the league position, but I see the team that I played for, I think we had a lot more character. I think we had a lot more bottle. I think you know, Howard Kendall had players that he could rely on. You're playing for the history of the football club and it would be horrendous for a player to have a relegation while you're at Everton on your CV and it's something that we desperately didn't want. The advice I would give the current Everton players is don't look to blame anyone else. Everyone thinks bravery is by going in for tackles and 50-50s. It's not. It's when you're at Goodison and you're 1-0 down. Be brave, want the ball and try and play your football because there's some talented players there. But this is going to take ball. Deli Alli. Now Rondon, Richarlison! At last, Goodison Park reacts. The Goodison crowd vital. So if Everton are going to survive, in my opinion, it's going to be down to home form. And this is where Frank Lampard will be looking at the character of his players and think, right, who really wants it? Who's got that desire? Who's got the resilience? So it's on the players. Spirit and fight is the base. Whether you're our position fighting to start or Liverpool's position trying to win the quadruple, it's the same thing. If you don't have spirit and fight, you're going to foul at both ends. So that's the important thing for us. And then the rest, playing football, those things, yeah, of course we want to play well. Havertz helping it on, and there's the goal. Beautifully taken by Alonso. Here's Cristiano Ronaldo. A lead that lasted barely two minutes. It's hard to put your finger on Chelsea this season. I think maybe a few things off the pitch. One or two players out of contract. One or two players maybe moving on. I think that's unsettled the ship. You've got to drill these players into saying, listen, the season's not over. Don't think you're on the beach. I don't think you can drift towards an FA Cup final. And I think he's good at that, Thomas Tuchel. I think he's a good man manager. So I think he'll, he'll get his players going for it. There's a chance for Everton, but also if Chelsea turn it on and they find their groove, they're still a very good side. Everybody tells me about the atmosphere in, in Everton, in Goodison Park, and, um, and uh, how, how emotional and how tough it is to, to, to play there. So I'm excited to go there and we expect a tough fight. It wouldn't stun me if Everton beat Chelsea at home. That's what can happen at Goodison, and Chelsea are not in amazing form. Their away form is better than their home form, so it's good for Chelsea. But the Evertonians have got to make this a hard place and a hostile place, and that's what it has to be, and the players on the pitch have got to be brutal. So win your individual battles, and then hopefully you can come out in the right end of the results. Five games remain, one point the gap between Manchester City and Liverpool at the top of the Premier League, and just two separate the North London clubs in that scrap to finish fourth. Equally intense at the bottom with Norwich on the brink and Watford teetering too, Everton are facing the unthinkable. A game in hand, their only comfort, two points behind Burnley. More to come on the clubs targeting a place among Europe's elite, including Arsenal's trip across the capital, where a wily West Ham lie in wait. Aston Villa should have been enjoying these last couple of months of the season, but those previously assured performances have deserted them of late. 15th in the table, Steven Gerrard's side have only collected a single point from their past five matches, conceding nine times in the process. The goalless draw with Leicester last time out came with small improvements, and the manager wants to make sure his players impose themselves. Our team and um, trying to prepare the lads in the best way to put in a positive performance. We. We need a win, we want to win, and um, the game plan is going to be as aggressive as we can be to, to try and deliver the three points for our supporters. There is a chance Norwich City could be relegated this weekend, losing the West Midlands, and they'll be a hostage to fortune. And it would be a cruel twist for it to happen to Dean Smith on a ground where he enjoyed so many happy memories. He says the Canaries will keep on fighting, though it's 30 years this November since Norwich last won a Premier League game at Villa Park. With the meanest defence outside the top three, but one of the top flight's least effective attacks, Wolves are always walking a tightrope between success and failure. 
In recent weeks, they've stumbled and need to quickly recover their footing after back-to-back 1-0 defeats if they're to reach their goal of landing a place in Europe. Opponents Brighton and Albion have just matched their record Premier League points tally, the platform they hope for a top-half finish. I think you start off the Premier League and, you, and your main target is to make sure you get enough points to stay in the league. You can see how complicated it is and how difficult it is and how clubs with big resources can struggle if, if things don't go your way. So always you have to be respectful of that, but we're, we're trying to improve every year. We've 41 points the last two years, so we, we want to try and improve that. We want, to, we want to try and finish off as strongly as we can. We've got 12 points to play for, which, which can make a, you know, a, a big difference to how the season looks and how we can assess things. Historically, Brighton were something of a bogey team for Wolves, but they've beaten them just once in seven Premier League attempts, the very first back in 2018. It's been the toughest week for one of Southampton's brightest talents. Tino Livramento isn't expected to play again this year after suffering an anterior cruciate ligament injury in last weekend's 2-2 draw at Brighton. Saints were 2-0 down in that game before James Ward-Prowse's latest masterclass. He's played over 300 Premier League games since the club secured its return to the top flight a decade ago this week. I know that we are celebrating our 10th year anniversary in the Premier League for Southampton and I think uh, to do this with a top 10 finish would be a great achievement for us as a club because I think to be consistently on a, in the best league in the world for such a long time and then end up in the top 10 would be a massive achievement for us and this is the goal. And that has to be the ambition for weekend opponents Crystal Palace as well. Their season has followed a similar pattern to Saints and they'd be above them in the table had they made their dominance count in the goalless draw with Leeds last Monday. Palace are 14th, exactly where they finished in the past two seasons. There will certainly be some frustration if their obvious potential doesn't bring an improvement on that. Five months into Antonio Conte's reign in North London, fortunes seem to be spinning in Tottenham Hotspur's favour. And here is Steven Bergwijn, five! And the Reese able to pull it away and gratefully grab it. But for him, it could be a very different story. Spurs had their hands on fourth and were intent on tightening their grip, only to wobble when it really mattered. Big chance for Trossard! Another massive twist in the race for a place in the Champions League. Spurs dejected. It's Kane! It's a fraction wide. As Tottenham's goals dry up, are their top four hopes potentially following suit? Looking at Spurs' form, they started quite slowly. They were great results in the end, including obviously the Newcastle result in particular. And it felt like these the Brighton game and, and then Brentford, that those, those performances were coming. Clearly, it's a squad that Antonio Conte has worked very hard with. And suddenly they were in there, they were in there, in that fourth place battle. Looking forward for Spurs, how important are these games coming up? Well, they're, they're huge. I mean, it's not just a question of the immediate future of Champions League qualification, but it's also the wider question of what are Spurs going to be like next season? What competition are they going to be in and, what, and who is going to be managing them? In taking just one point from a possible six against Brighton and Brentford, Spurs couldn't even muster up a shot on target. That feels like a massive opportunity missed when their Champions League hopes may now rest on three potentially gruelling fixtures. It's Liverpool, then Arsenal after this weekend. And Leicester, you know very well, they have a, a really good squad and uh, uh, for sure uh, it'll be a difficult game. We have to go step by step and to understand that uh, this is a big opportunity for us and that we have to face uh, every game with the great enthusiasm, with the great passion and, uh, and with joy. Clearly Conte's just breathed life into Spurs, he's a great manager, but he's also a manager who feels very strongly that he needs to be supported. If things aren't going his way, then would he be the right man to have the Spurs? next season. Everything is dependent on these next few games and whether they can qualify for the Champions League. Europe is high in Leicester's thoughts too. The Europa Conference League semi-finalists drew 1-1 with Roma on Thursday, so the upcoming second leg poses some selection dilemmas for Brendan Rodgers. Jamie Vardy... So you have to re-energise and 
uh, we'll cover as best you can. We've, you know, our, our schedule over the last numbers of weeks has, of course, been, uh, been very challenging, but it's what you want. But we always put out a team to, to get a good result. We've seen as a club this year the, the challenges that we've had with having a European campaign and uh, and when you then on top of that have injuries, you, you know, the, it is really difficult to balance, but everything's still possible. We can still finish the season with a trophy. So um, as long as though those possibilities are there, everything's there to fight for. And if there's still nothing trophy-wise left to fight for, there's pride. Harry Kane's often had a field day against Leicester, helping to dash their top four dreams in the last two seasons. Roles are reversed this year as the Foxes try to fight back. Vardy is as fundamental to Leicester as Kane and Son are to Spurs. They, 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 they really miss him. I do think that that, that front three of Spurs with Kulisevsky as well has been a great signing. But that's, you know, when, when that clicks, that's, in, that's among the best in the Premier League. So, I mean, after the last two games where, they've, where Kane and Son haven't scored, I think that will be the crucial area. It's been five frustrating years without Champions League football at the Emirates. Invincibility has been replaced by an inability to even get close to what they once were. But having negotiated a chaotic month, Arsenal are almost part of Europe's elite again. Anderson. Oh, but all the way through for Jordan Ayew. And Arsenal have a problem at Selhurst Park. Altimwadu! What a finish that is! More problems for Arsenal! Southampton do find a way through, and it's Jan Benderek that gives them the lead. Saka to seal it. A fourth Arsenal goal, a fourth straight defeat avoided. Fourth spot moves that little bit closer. Hit by Saka, what a goal! What a wonderful, wonderful goal! And Arsenal are where they want to be. Big wins against big rivals has re-established Arsenal's position as the most favourable of those chasing fourth spot. But Tottenham are two points behind them, and that North London derby in just under a fortnight is looking more pivotal with every passing day. I think here they're going to be still in twists and turns. We all have difficult matches to play. We all know how difficult it is to win the games in the Premier League and, um, and now we had two really good results that are putting again in a, in a really good position but it's again about doing it again with them. We know what we have to do. We have five games left. We know how important it is for us this season to get back where we want to be in the Champions League. We are in very good position at the moment but you can see weekend by weekend the table is changing and um, the key game for my side will be against West Ham. For a long time, it was East London at the forefront of the chase for Champions League football. But balancing a current European adventure with a slim squad has perhaps put pay to a top four finish for West Ham. They could still usurp the Gunners, but to do it, only a win this weekend will pass muster. It's a massive, massive game. Uh, we respect Arsenal. They're, you know, in a great bit of form at the minute. Um, you know, really pushing for that, for that top four, that top four place. And you know, we're pushing to stay into the, into the top six. And so it'll be a great, a great game. With the Europa League semi-final second leg against Frankfurt to come next week, David Moyes has continued to squeeze every last drop out of his loyal band of brothers. The task now is to ensure those high standards don't fade away when they need them the most. We've been challenge, challenging now for two years. We made it last year. We want to try and do it again because we've really enjoyed the journey we've been on with the European Games. I think it's, uh, I think it's lifted the level of the football club all round. We want to qualify for Europe. And as always, through your league position shows your consistency throughout the year, shows a, a level of uh, performances. So we want to keep that up. West Ham and Arsenal might not have entered the season with the same ambitions, but this has quickly developed into a personal battle for supremacy. And there'll be another London team very invested in how it all plays out on Sunday. First to play, Liverpool look to hit the top on Tyneside. Then bottom club Norwich could be relegated before the title race resumes with Manchester City at Leeds. 
It's a high-pressure Sunday for Everton and the teams chasing fourth before Monday's match at Old Trafford rounds things off. Everyone's getting ready for the final push. So much still at stake. Is a grand old club like Everton soon to be brought to its knees? Can Burnley make good their escape? Which North London club will have the last laugh at their fiercest rivals' expense? And for those with their eyes on the biggest prize, will the reigning champions be forced to relinquish their crown? In just three weeks' time, we'll have all the answers. From Chris Wise and me, Dave Beckett, goodbye.